Today I play the most hilarious and ridiculous game ever. Talking skulls? Check. Desecrating corpses? Why not? Burning witches for sport? Seems reasonable. Creating an army of zombie slaves? Are you serious? This one's a spicy one, people, so let's just get into it. I played 100 days of Graveyard Keeper. I began my journey buying some milk from Gary and his teddy bear. I headed through the rain towards home where my love awaited me. Next thing I knew, I was in the foggy void and this dude informed me a new chapter in my life had begun. I was now a graveyard keeper and he suggested I dig up Jerry. Whew, that is a good start. Let's go dig up some bodies. Love this game already. Oh yeah, we got the pixel art vibes. I was enjoying those vibes, no doubt, no doubt. There appeared to be plenty of room for crafting, farming, pooping in this outhouse with a love heart on its door, and no doubt many other satisfying endeavors. But first things first, exhuming the dead. <laughs> Holy sod, I'm a skull. Are you Jerry? Mm, why would you think I'm Jerry? Blah, 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 blah. Jerry the skull had amnesia, which I guess is fair considering his lack of brains, but he eventually remembered enough to instruct me to have a chat with this donkey. The donkey had a fresh corpse from the town, which was great news that made me laugh. <laughs> Uh, who made this game? The donkey was amazed that I could understand him, and he was also something of an anti-capitalist, perhaps even a communist, considering he called me his comrade. Grab that juicy corpse while it's still fresh. I took the body into the morgue, where Jerry instructed me to slice its flesh. He also told me he'd help me figure out how to get home if I bring him a beer. So, following the instructions of the alcoholic skull, I placed the body down on the preparation table and got to slicing. I extracted some flesh and immediately unlocked three cooking recipes. Burger, sandwich, and baked meat. Seems good, cannibalism is delicious. Next, it was time to bury, so I used this little blueprint desk to place a grave here, dug it, and popped the body in. And so, the first of many corpses was processed and buried in the church graveyard. And I got a burial certificate for my troubles. The bishop then wandered over. He's my boss, I guess. He said he visits the church every purple Sunday, and he told me to repair the graveyard, and that once I've improved its quality to five, he'll give me a promotion. I didn't really know what that meant, but the graveyard was at minus 29, so I had some work to to do. He also taught me about wood, stone, and technologies. There are multiple tech trees in this game, which looked juicy to me. I love a good tech tree. I also saw that there was an NPC page where quests are listed and a map, which was mostly in fog at this point. I checked out this trunk left behind by the previous graveyard keeper, who apparently disappeared 30 years ago. There were some repair kits and tools to get me started. I cleaned up a few of these scraggly bushes, and as you can see, this was quickly consuming my blue energy bar up here. I did manage to increase the graveyard quality up to minus 25 with my efforts before wandering off to investigate the world. I found this spot that's blocked until a certain day, a giant wheat field, and the village where I entered the Dead Horse Tavern. No one was particularly chatty in here except for Mrs. Chain who sold recipes and her husband Horadric the Tavern Keep. He told me the unauthorized meat in my bags looks delicious. Calm down cannibal. He also had me deliver a letter to the blacksmith. And just like in every other pixel art game known to man, the blacksmith asked me to kill some slimes. Also he gave me the blueprint for a furnace. I then revisited the tavern. That was Miss Charm Munro, clearly a very gifted singer. And she told me the same thing every woman tells me. Go away and come back when you're less pathetic. This poet called me over and asked me to get him some paper and ink so that he can write poems to impress Miss Charm. It looks like you've got paper and ink right in front of you already, you peanut, but fair enough. The tavern keep gave me a beer as thanks for delivering his letter. And then I headed out as day two dawned and wandered down here where I found the farmer. This guy sells seeds. I didn't buy any just yet, but it was good to know. And he taught me some veggie dish recipes. Then Jerry ambushed me from behind a bush and taught me about foraging. I investigated my farm a bit, placing down a garden bed, but of course I had no seeds, so I resolved to go back to the farm bloke once I had some money. I then investigated the yard blueprint desk and the basement, in which I heard this weird bald bloke snake raging about being locked out. There were multiple blocked passageways for me to clear once I had the resources, and some bags of flour and old broken barrels to collect. I drew some water from the well in the yard and then had a cheeky snooze. When you sleep in this game, time moves faster and you replenish energy. Makes sense to me. I awoke and worked out I could take the water out of the bucket, which was revolutionary, and I used it with flour to make some dough at my cooking table. I then chucked some dough in the oven to cook into bread, using some sticks I'd collected as fuel. I then foraged some mushrooms and flowers, and I chopped down my first tree. I carted the big old logs back to store in my yard's timber stockpile, and then couldn't figure out what to do with them, which is a common theme by the way, I must admit I was reasonably confused early on in this game. There are lots of mechanics that you've got to kind of work out by bumbling around like a 
goose. Good thing for me though, I am a grade A goose. Anyway, I then gave Jerry his B. He was disappointed that it wasn't very strong, but with that I'd earned 20 points of friendship and I was able to ask Jerry how to get home to my real world. He said there is a portal on Witch's Hill and that I should check out the library under the church or chat to the astrologer to find out more. He also told me to get him some wine. There were quests piling up, but for now it was time to deal with body number two. I stole its flesh, had a look at these red and white skulls, which were almost certainly important, but meant nothing to me at this point, and then headed to the graveyard to bury it, earning my second burial certificate. I grabbed my first two pieces of bread, which were ready, put more on to cook, and then headed out. I'm running east to see the astrologer, because I think he's around on whatever this day is, the blue moon the Blue Crescent Moon Day. I was correct about what day the astrologer visits, but I was reading the calendar incorrectly. See, I thought whatever was currently at the top of the circle represented the current day, when in fact it was the bottom of the circle. In other words, I was confused about what day it was and the astrologer was not here. I did at least find the fisherman who tasked me with finding him six moths. He promised to give me a fishing rod in return. I wandered around foraging as the sun rose on day four and I was getting lots of green tech points. So I whipped open the tech menu and unlocked the skill to harvest bones and skin from the dead bodies. A good find. By the way, you get red tech points from crafting, green points from natural activities like foraging and farming, and blue points from spiritual activities. And these blue points are pretty scarce early on. I stumbled upon this weird bloke, Dig, and rudely assumed that he must be crazy. He insisted he's not, and then proceeded to say a bunch of crazy things before asking me to bring him some honey. I continued my wandering and found this gypsy baron that asked for four silver quality fish fillets, this carpenter, Tress, Rosa, who sold dairy goods, and the beekeeper. I then sold my two burial certificates at the tavern for three silver. I decided to use these earnings to buy honey for Dig, because I love Dig. Except by the time I got to him, he had disappeared for the night, which was very rude. And so I made the long walk home. I put some baked mushrooms on to cook. By the way, the bread gives 15 energy and these mushroom skewers will give 12 each, which was handy, but certainly wasn't enough to keep my energy topped up for long. And so for the early game, snoozing up a storm was the best way to replenish energy. After this particular snooze, the ghost Yorick paid me a visit, complaining about how mean the ghost of the body in the bottom right corner of the graveyard was behaving. He gave me an exhumation license and told me to dig up the body and chuck it in the river. And I've never been one to argue with a ghost, so guess what I did? <laughs> what have I done? What have I done? Like the video and subscribe if you think it's perfectly normal to dig up a body and dump it in the river all because a ghost told you to. I investigated my tech tree a bit and unlocked beekeeping, soaring, and firewood before collecting a bunch of stone and wood as I cleared out my yard a bit. I built my first workstation, a sawhorse, and this lets me cut those big logs I've been collecting into flitch or billets. I used the last of my energy to break this big old rock and then headed for a snooze. I woke Yorick the ghost who was thankful that I removed the troublesome corpse from the graveyard. He explained the red and white skulls to me. They represent a corpse's spiritual status. Basically, the corpses affect my graveyard quality, and white skulls are good, red skulls are bad. And the way to get rid of red skulls and increase the white skulls is by removing body parts or embalming. I made a furnace and chopped up some billets to make a chopping station, and then chopped some firewood to fuel my oven, in which I continued baking bread. I collected some more resources through the night, and suddenly it was day seven. I continued acquainting myself with the world when I made a grand discovery. There was a bunch of iron to collect directly north of my house. The days in this game are really quick by the way, so it was somehow already night by the time I was done collecting most of the iron, and I was ambushed by bats. I killed a couple but then ran out of energy so I was forced to flee. Ah! Ah! I'd collected a whopping 46 iron ore, so I put some on to smelt. I probably should have just slept to renew my energy, but I hate using time sleeping. So I ate some fresh bread and a bunch of berries and mushrooms and kept working. I unlocked transplanting, which lets me plant orchard trees, a few simple grave decorations, and the ability to extract blood and fat from bodies. I collected more stone, fought some slimes, collected more wood, and then welcomed my third juicy corpse. This one had one red skull and two white, and when I removed the blood, it became three white skulls. So I guess this person had bad blood. I buried the corpse, put a bunch more iron onto smelt, and then finally figured out I could cook bread more than one at a time if I simply used this little arrow. A revolutionary find. On day nine, I unlocked woodworking and made myself a carpenter's bench, granting me access to planks, which are very handy for crafting tons of various things. I made a couple and then made a wooden cross and grave fence. I took these to the graveyard and placed them both on this grave. And as you can see, the grave's quality went from a zero to a three. And with that, I finally understood how to improve my graveyard quality. Quality. Remember
removing these scraggly trees helped a bit too. And then I figured out I could repair some of these old grave decorations using the repair kits I was given. I'd improved the graveyard quality up to minus 11 when another body arrived. It was the exact same as the last body. All I had to do was remove the blood. I unlocked stoneworking, mining and primitive forging and then finally had a sleep. And on day 10, I wanted to clear this rubble, but I needed simple iron parts. I headed out collecting mushrooms and berries as I went and I sold my two burial certificates to the tavern. I then hit up the blacksmith and bought the four simple iron parts I needed. While I was out, Donkey brought another body and it's such a long run home, it was night by the time I returned to carve it up. I decided to remove everything from this body and I made a surgeon's mistake, maiming the body and reducing its quality. Uh, whoops, I can put the skin back on. <laughs> So it turns out you can put body parts back in and that actually returned one of the white skulls to this particular body. Preparing corpses is quite the art form. I slept half of day 11 just to get my energy back. And when I emerged, Jerry was rather distressed that the Inquisitor was visiting Witch's Hill. And I promised to go be a distraction so Jerry didn't get crushed by the Inquisitor's wrath. I wandered over and the Inquisitor was a whispery fellow who invited me to join him at a witch burning ceremony. Uh, yeah, let's get, let's get, it would be my honor. The Inquisitor seemed worried that the dark cult was rising, and he of course wants the church to be all powerful, so he needs to eliminate any potential threats. I don't know about all that, but who can argue with a fun time burning some witch? The Inquisitor said he didn't trust anyone in the village and asked if I would assist him. I agreed, and he said he'd have some tasks for me on the same day next week. And this is when I finally realized. Oh, oh, oh. I've just realized something. I was about to say it isn't this day. It's this day, but it's the one on the it's the one on the bottom that shows what day it is. For goodness sake. All right, well that helps. I explored the witch's hill a bit. Looks like this area's had a bit of a dramatic past. And then I tended to this body which had decayed a bit while I was off gallivanting. Kind of loses a bit of juice if you're a bit slow to the punch, I see. I guess I just trial and error this and I can always put it back in. Oh, that worked. Happy days. It was Blue Crescent Moon Day on day 12, so it was off to find the astrologer. I dropped by the tavern to sell some burial certificates, bought some nails from the blacksmith, and then... Ding dong, bing bang bong. I gave Dig his honey, in return for which he taught me the cake recipe. I then continued east to the lighthouse. The astrologer promised to help me, but he wanted a cranium first, and unfortunately I forgot to bring one. I ran all the way home, grabbed a skull, and ran all the way back. Oh, here he is, he's leaving. No! Stop! If you're not going to talk to me, then you're going to have to push me. The astrologer pushed me all the way to this exit that leads into town. Looks like I need a town pass to go there. And I guess I'll have to wait a week before I can give the bloke his skull. I made a stone cutter because I wanted more stone repair kits for the graveyard, but they required clay, which I had no idea how to get. And so I wandered in search of clay, but I had no luck. Though I did find a couple of bee trees, which gave me honey and beeswax, as well as a bunch of berries to forage. I found this broken apiary, which I guess I can repair to keep my own bees if I want. And also this blocks road, which I can unblock to extend my lands further north. This game has lots going on. There is no doubt about that. My rusty pickaxe wore out, so I repaired it and put a bunch more iron onto smelt and headed to bed. On day 14, I realized I could make gravestones with my stone cutter and these provide plus two graveyard quality. So I made a bunch. I started placing them, but was interrupted by another body arriving. So I dealt with that and then continued with the gravestones and managed to get the graveyard quality up to zero. Finally, no longer in the negatives. I went on the hunt for more stone, made myself six more gravestones and then decided I wanted to use the daylight to buy some seeds from the farmer. The berries and mushroom skewers had been doing decently, but as you can see, I was tapped for energy and fresh out of food at this point. So I was desperate for a better energy solution and I figured growing crops was my best bet. I bought 10 cabbage, 10 carrot and six wheat seeds. I quickly ducked into the tavern to sell another burial certificate. And while there, I noticed the merchant was visiting. Apparently this guy technically owns the farmland south of my house, but he agreed to let me continue using it if I brought him some veggies. He wants 12 carrots, cabbage and beets. He also had had chronic hiccups, so he asked me to get him some hiccup grass, which is supposedly a cure. I planted some cabbage seeds in my one garden bed and realized you need four seeds at a time to plant. I also couldn't work out how to water the crops, so I assumed you didn't need to. I placed down a bunch more garden beds, but I was still dead out of energy, so I headed to bed. But first I had a quick tech session, unlocking garden beds with sticks, compost, and the ability to remove the brain, heart, and intestines of corpses. Very juicy. I awoke with full energy and finished planting my seeds before scooping this corpse up and removing its heart. It didn't seem to be particularly beneficial
beneficial, but when you've just learned how to chop hearts out, you just gotta give it a try, what can I say? I buried him and continued placing gravestones. I had to remove a few old broken ones, but managed to get the graveyard quality up to six, which means old mate Bishop will be very pleased with me come Sunday. I then made myself a wooden anvil, so I can make my own nails and iron parts now instead of throwing money away at the blacksmith. But once again, a complete lack of energy did me dirty. I snoozed the day away and goodness me, it was foggy when I awoke. I made a bunch of nails and simple iron parts. Actually, I'm curious, can I sell this stuff? See, I was struggling to make money in this game and I needed a bunch to buy more seeds. I sold my latest burial certificate and also sold 30 nails and seven simple iron parts to the blacksmith. He only had limited money, so I basically had him buy as much as he could afford. I had over 10 silver, so the plan worked and I bought a bunch of seeds from Old McDonald. On my way home, I dropped by Witch's Hill as the Inquisitor was back for his weekly visit. He tasked me with gathering 20 firewood and 10 flyers to assist in his next witch burning. This guy views burnings as a spectacle, hence the flyers to invite people. What an interesting bloke. I then got to planting and I also placed the trunk down so I've got a little storage area for my farm. After a snooze, I awoke to find my first cabbage patch ready on day 18. It gave me six cabbage, five crop waste and returned three seeds to me. It was crescent moon day, which meant the astrologer was in town. So I gave him a skull. With that, I had 10 friendship points and I was able to ask him about the portal on Witch's Hill. He said the previous graveyard keeper was also obsessed with the portal and that he disappeared at some point and that all the astrologer had left was a key. Apparently this will help me get deeper into the underground beneath my house. And I was instructed to look for the old gravekeeper's diary, which might hold more clues. I explored some more and discovered this passage north to a mountain fort, but I couldn't gain access just yet. I also found the lumberjack who asked me to bring him an iron ax. I then threaded through the forest, collecting mushrooms galore, and I came away with 26, enough to cook 15 skewers. I found some more crops had grown, so I harvested and replanted what I could. And then it was day 19, the Lord's Day. So of course the self-absorbed bishop was back, checking himself out in his hand mirror. He's looking at himself in the mirror. <laughs> I informed him of the graveyard's glow up and he officially appointed me prior of the church and it was time for me to give my first sermon. He informed me that I can decorate the church to raise its quality. He also gave me a casual prayer to use for my first service. I gave my first sermon saying the profound words, may the force be with you. And I was rewarded with three faith for my efforts. And from now on, it was my duty to preach and pray every Sunday. I now also had access to this Royal mailbox out front, which offered various services, including exhumation licenses in case I want to dig up any more bodies and I also got access to the church basement. There was a study table down here and I could use faith and science to learn more about almost every item in the game. I chopped down these old broken bookshelves and found this note which I studied at the table to earn for science. I studied flesh and it informed me that flesh decomposes into nothing so I guess I didn't learn much but I did receive 20 blue tech points, the first blue points I'd ever gotten. I researched green jelly which decomposes into fluid and essence, whatever that means, and this one gave me green points. I then worked out the item literally tells you what type of points you'll receive, so I studied blood and earned myself another 20 blue points. Now I was finally able to unlock some tech that had previously been unreachable. I unlocked insect gathering, so I can get those moths for the fisherman's quest, master gatherer, which grants a perk that increases the amount of forageables I get, and then found I was spoiled for choice. So I decided to hang on to the remaining 25 blue points for now. I made four composters and then harvested and replanted my remaining crops. I cooked 30 of my carrots into 60 carrot cutlets, which provide 15 energy each. This was a glorious find, and these became my go-to food ongoing. I snoozed much of day 20 away before doing a little work around the yard and collecting my first peat and maggots from the compost. And it looks like peat works as a fertilizer. I headed into town and visited the merchant, delivering him all the veggies he asked for. He wasn't particularly impressed, but he saw potential. So he told me to bring him a trading license, at which point he'd be willing to go into business with me. I foraged a bunch of berries and mushrooms, and I now collected double thanks to that perk I researched. And then I I unlocked bee domestication and grape farming. I collected my remaining carrot cutlets and then figured I might as well make some bread too. I turned all my wheat into flour and all my flour into dough ready to cook. I made another trunk for the yard, investigated the beekeeping situation, but found I needed paper to repair it. So I put that on hold for now. On day 23, I finally remembered I could make planks. So I made some as well as some iron parts and wooden wedges and finally unblocked these passages downstairs. The donkey was visiting and he was very disappointed. I turned capitalist with my various ventures 
pictures, so he told me he was no longer willing to call me comrade. He also left me a most generous present, a big old donkey poo poo. It had a bunch of carrot seeds in it though, so jokes on you donkey, you just increased the profitability of my capitalist farming enterprise. I butchered and buried the body donkey brought me and then found my crops were ready once more. So I harvested and replanted with peat as fertilizer. I put the fresh batch of carrots on to cook and then checked out the underground. Off to the right were two ladders. One was blocked for now, but the other took me straight into town. This was great news. No more painfully long walks through wheat fields. And over to the left was a blocked passage leading to the church basement and this gate, which as yet I could not unlock. I researched paper crafting and writing supplies, but I needed more complex materials to make the church workbench and writing desk. So I unlocked advanced forging, tools and glass as well. I also unlocked business of faith so I can make those flyers for the inquisitor. A snake had showed up under my house and he was not a friendly fellow. He threatened to stab me, so I threatened him back, which was probably a bad idea. Fortunately, no blood was spilled, but I need to give him five faith orbs in order to convince him to help me. I crafted myself iron tools. These are 30% more efficient than my original rusty tools. And I made an iron anvil on which I was able to make some complex iron parts. Oh crap, it's... Sunday, I need to go do my sermon. I almost forgot. I earned three faith and 27 copper for my troubles, which seemed a little low since my sermon was such a banger. I studied the chaos solution I found in the chest down here to earn myself 10 more blue points, and I unlocked writing. I crafted some more planks and increased the yard space. So much room for activities. And I also made myself another furnace for some reason. I crafted some metal materials, harvested and replanted my crops, and then returned to the church to make my desk. This was where I'd be able to use the stories I'd been accumulating each time I completed a course. West. I could turn them into notes and then turn three notes into a chapter and then use a chapter to make higher quality prayers for my church services. But I needed a source of ink and paper before I could do any of that. So I collected a bunch of wood and gathered materials to make the church workbench. My good friend Donkey arrived to distract me from my writing efforts and he declared that he was on strike until I oiled his cartwheels and that each body would cost me five carrots from now on. He was not gonna tolerate being taken advantage of by a capitalist. Flame and unions. I had a bunch of carrots handy so I placed these in his box, but I wasn't sure where to find oil. I used the bat wings I collected early to make pigskin paper which I was able to turn into clean paper. Now all I needed was some black paint for the ink. I had no idea how to get that though, so it was another case of I guess I'll figure that out later. I made this scroll shelf for extra storage and studied all the clean paper to collect 16 science. And I studied this grave cross and marker to earn another 30 blue tech points. I needed to generate a bunch of red points too, so I did some crafting and chopping. But as daytime hit, I headed into town because I had a theory on how to get some oil. I vaguely remembered Dig sold seed oil, so I bought some as well as some hemp seed. Seeds. Turns out I was correct, as I was able to turn the seed oil into 10 oil, with which I greased up Donkey's cart and got him moving again. I stole the skin from this body to use for paper, and then things went downhill with the surgery, so I ended up butchering the crap out of this body, which wasn't my finest moment. Considering this body was useless for the graveyard quality, as it had zero white skulls, I decided to research cremation. I made a pyre and set it to burn. I still got the burial certificate, which is good, but I guess it probably should have been a burning certificate, but I'm not gonna argue. And I also got some ash and salt. I finally got back to collecting red points and once I had 200 I unlocked the circular saw. I made one immediately and crafted what I was after, some wooden beams. I used these to unblock these passages down here so now the morgue, church and my house were all connected underground which is quite convenient. I then realized there was a random body out here so I grabbed it and butchered the crap out of it for parts. And I have no idea why but I buried it and put a headstone on it even though that does literally nothing. I should have burnt this one but clearly I was still learning at this point. It was Sunday so the Bishop was here for a visit and I asked him what to do next and he informed me he was working on a soup kitchen because he felt it made him look good and he needed some bowls. So he taught me how to collect clay and sand and asked me to make him some. I got a tad overexcited by my newfound ability to dig infinite clay from this hole and so I completely missed my opportunity to perform this week's sermon, meaning I threw away this week's faith, which was a big fail. I suddenly realized I could repair this mortuary desk in the morgue, so I did, and made myself a preparation place and a pallet in which I can store bodies. I already had a preparation place, so that was a bit pointless, but I at least now had three spots to store bodies. Another body arrived and I managed to prepare a five white skull body. Very nice. I then sold all the cabbage I'd grown to the farmer and bought all the carrot seeds I could. Carrots were my main food source and my means of paying donkey, so I figured I should just go hard on the carrots. I also sold the three burial certificates I'd accrued and then returned to deal with yet another body. These bodies come thick and fast. I'm not gonna lie, it is quite overwhelming. 
On day 34, I planted all them carrot seeds I'd bought, and then finally repaired this bridge over here to the west, which granted me access to the swamp. And crucially, more iron nodes. I had almost run out of iron, so this was a great find. The swamp was a kind of spiral maze, so I wandered through collecting iron until I reached the center where I found this hut. There was a lady who thought I was a foul spirit, which was very offensive. She had forgotten who she was, and she asked me if she looked like a fairy princess or a witch. And she told me to get her a health potion to restore her memory. And she unlocked access Access to a bunch of alchemy stations. Escaping the swamp was quite a pain, but I got there eventually, and once out I found a bunch more iron to collect, another blocked path north, and a giant pile of sand. I collected sand until my shovel broke and then headed home. On my way I scooped up this fairly decayed body, and while processing it, yet another body arrived. I popped this second one on the pallet and left it there for later and buried the first. On day 36 I researched pottery, made myself a pottery station, and crafted the 20 bowls for the bishop. I also unlocked woodcutter, which made me a more effective log collector and also allowed me to chop down big trees, including these ones clogging up my yard. I harvested and replanted, popped this body on the prep table but just left it there because I was tired of dealing with bodies, and then finally figured out how to catch moths. It turns out they can be found in flowers at night. Bishop was back so I gave him his bowls and he said they were ugly, which was perfect for the poor people. Good one Bishop. He said I could upgrade the church to a big church, but I had some work to do first. I needed to get the graveyard to 30 quality, the church interior to 20 quality, and he also wanted me to give him some fish. I performed my weekly sermon and netted only one faith because my prayer failed, so that was a bit sad, and it became clear to me that I needed to put some work into my church interior. I unlocked comfort of faith so that I could begin making pews. I gathered the necessary materials and then plonked four down. This raised the church quality up to nine points. And I would have researched more decorative options, but I was fresh out of blue tech points. I then collected flowers until the sun came up and managed to get myself six moths. I gave the lumberjack the iron axe he requested, in return for which I earned the lasagna and pasta recipes. And and then I gave the fisherman his moths and he gave me a simple fishing rod, as well as some fishy cooking recipes. A third body had arrived, so I figured I'd better actually deal with this one, so I harvested all its organs and burned it. I had quite a few organs piling up, so I gave them pride of place in this scroll shelf. I love a good library of brains, hearts, and guts. Beautiful to behold. I wandered back into the swamp to grab some hiccup grass, which I needed for the merchant's quest, and then I gave fishing a crack. The fishing minigame was a simple one, reminiscent of literally every other game's fishing minigame. And I caught myself 10 waterfall gudgeons before for returning to deal with another body. I once again butchered the heck out of this one. I was doing a stinker of a job as Gravekeeper, to be honest. I then crafted up a storm, harvested and replanted my crops, and then repaired the apiary. I needed 10 bees to make a beehive though, so I had some bee hunting to do. I put a bunch of glass on to smelt in my second furnace, and then dealt with yet another fresh body. I then finally cleared the path north and headed off to explore. There was an enormous tree with the future option to make a big tree sawmill once I unlocked the research, I guess. There was a big forest with some bee trees that nearly killed me me, vicious, vicious bees. And at this fishing spot, I managed to catch a silver quality bream, so that was promising. And all the way north, I made some most curious finds. There was a cabin in the woods where I could set up a secondary base of sorts, and there were giant stone and marble quarries. I happened to have the materials to build the marble quarry, and also chip off a couple of slabs. And over here, the most interesting find of all. The mine is full of toxic gases, if only I could find someone who doesn't need to breathe. What about Jerry? Jerry the skull. So it looks like there's, there's good stuff to collect in there, but I can't go in there. I need some kind of slave. And as I was wandering home with my marble slab, I found this coal seam. I collected a stack of 100 coal, and this will be very handy for fueling my machines. Crafted at zombie mine. So that's called a zombie mine. Zombies don't need to breathe. I think I'm gonna get zombies to work the mine for me eventually. <laughs> I think that's what's gonna happen. So yeah, my guess was there were zombies in my future. This was a very exciting prospect. Nothing would make me happier than a bunch of zombies collecting raw materials for me. For now though, I headed home with some marble and actually dealt with this corpse responsibly. And it was somehow Sunday again, so I gave another sermon, and it appeared the improvement in the church resulted in a bigger crowd, and I managed to earn a whopping four faith. I then had a well-earned snooze to regenerate my health, since I was at literally one HP thanks to those vicious bees. I tended my crops and kept my oven cooking them carrots, and then headed into town to sell the four burial certificates I'd accumulated. And I attempted to sell my fish and fish fillets to the fisherman, but he wasn't interested, which was rude. I then made a bunch of grey fences and wooden crosses, and I used my new coal to fuel a bunch more iron smelting. I placed down fences and crosses willy-nilly, and managed to get the graveyard quality up from 8 all the way to 27. The merchant was in town, so I gave him his hiccup grass, and it worked. His hiccups were cured, but it caused him to lose his taste. He said to track down a witch that used to give him love potions, which 
was weird, but he reckoned they'd be able to help. Fortunately, I happened to know a witch. I made stone repair kits and a bunch more wooden grave decorations, and as I was slicing and dicing today's corpse, I realized Snake was visiting. I managed to save up five faith orbs, so I gave them to him. He told me I appear useless, but also harmless, which was quite frankly the most beautiful thing anyone's ever said to me. And he agreed to help me, since he wants to get through the gate too. He gave me these instructions to the key. I needed to use this to research the key at the study table, but I was now fresh out of faith, so I had to wait until Sunday. I buried that body I'd been working on and placed down a few more decorations and repaired some others and boom, graveyard quality of 36. I tended my crops once again, check out this growing pile of maggots, and then I chopped and crafted before making a mess of yet another corpse. I don't know why I was being so lazy, but I gave up and left it to rot with the other two. I then crafted some hemp rope. Okay, we've made a discovery. We made a very interesting discovery. Crafting hemp gives me blue science points. Up until this point, I'd assumed the only way to get blue points was through study, but it turns out crafting spiritual related items gives blue points too. This was groundbreaking news. My tech was no longer gated behind faith accumulation. I unlocked light of faith and had enough beeswax to craft two candles, and these gave me two blue points each. I also placed two candelabra in the church, bringing its quality up to 11. I unlocked ceramic firing, made a bunch of bowls, and put them in the furnace to make some ceramic jugs, hoping they'd give me blue points. I bought some more hemp seeds from Dig so I can make some more rope, and I bought milk and eggs, and also some feathers in case I need them, so that I can make myself cake, because cake gives a buff that increases the amount of blue points you get from studying stuff. I made a bunch of pastry dough and had enough ingredients to cook eight cakes. And unfortunately, the ceramic jugs only gave red points, so that was a miss. Sunday rolled around and I showed the bishop the excellent quality of the graveyard, and he said he was no longer disgusted by it, so that was great news. My sermon earned me four faith again this week, so I ate some cake and did some study. I studied the key first, which earned me an active key. I then studied a skull and all up I now had 31 blue points. I unlocked glass blower and advanced smelting. I collected a bunch of materials, made a level two furnace and crafted a bunch of conical flasks. I made some ceramic funeral urns by chucking ash in those urns I made, and this at least earned me three blue points. And then I studied some fat and got back up to 34 blue points total. Oh, even these are giving me blue. Oh, that is great news. That is wonderful news. And that discovery there marked the end of my blue points woes. Conical flasks are super easy to make. You just need river sand, of which I have an infinite supply, and furnaces to make the glass and flasks. And so I decided to make yet another furnace so that I could ramp up production. And I unlocked glass blower rank two, so I could begin making advanced conical flasks too. A snake had showed up, so I gave him the key. He unlocked the gate and started ranting about how he was gonna get revenge on everyone. And I wandered into this room to find the diary for the astrologer and what? Before revisiting the site of my untimely demise, I did some random chores. I unlocked weapons, made some more hemp rope, and then realized a body hadn't been delivered for a few days and figured that must be because the morgue was full. So I buried one body, made myself an improved sword and crafted some advanced conical flasks and then burned the other two bodies. After a day of crafting, another body arrived and I decided to unlock the gentle butcher perk, which makes surgical mistakes less likely. And then I managed to get this corpse to five white skulls before burying it. I also made a trunk down at the crematorium to make burning bodies as convenient as possible. I then made use of some of those flasks and made an alchemy workbench, where I can mix two substances to create potions, but I had no idea what was going on. The alchemy in this game was definitely a job for Google, but for now I bailed and finally went to investigate the site of my earlier death. Snake was amazed to see me and was outraged to discover that someone as useless as me was gifted with immortality. But then he calmed down and realized I could be of use to him. He revealed there's a dangerous dungeon down the stairs behind him and asked me to go down and collect a bucket of blood and five bloody nails for him. And if I did that, he'd help me. Bucket of blood, bloody nails, what could go wrong? I found this creature Gunter back here too. And he asked me to hit him in the face because he just wanted to feel something. And then he told me he's a zombie and that zombies used to help his old master. He also told me where I could dig one up. I found the blueprint for a resurrection table and some zombie juice too. The dawn of an undead age had begun. Although bear with me, it takes me a while to figure out how the heck zombies work, but I do get there eventually. I then grabbed the diary from this room 
being careful not to step on the Bernie Bernie thing this time. Conveniently, it was Blue Crescent Moon Day, so I headed to visit the astrologer. I gave him the diary and he discovered that the portal home could be made if I created two parts, an emitter and a barrel, and these would assemble into a spirit laser. But first I needed to restore the diary so he could find out more info, so I needed acid and restoration tools. He also suggested I investigate the portal itself to search for more clues. I buried today's body, tended the crops, and kept the conical flask production moving, and on day 55 I gave yet another banger of a sermon, earning four more faith. I ate some cake and used these to study intestines and skin, and earned a whopping 72 blue points. I unlocked gardening to improve my farming skills, and stone cutter too. This allowed me to make some polished stones, with which I made an alchemy mill. I also made a hand mixer. These machines break stuff down into alchemy ingredients. I milled some intestines and got life powder, and I hand mixed some fat and got slowing solution. Fair enough. I then had a little dive into snakes' dungeons. There were bats and slimes and lots of pots and barrels that I could destroy, and these held a bunch of goodies including various seeds, metal parts, and best of all, health potions. I was very confused by alchemy, so this was great news. I now had the health potion I needed for the witch's quest without having to mix it myself. I didn't find any bloody nails or buckets of blood for snake though, although I did only clear two levels before heading out, as I felt like I had too many other things I should be doing. I tended to my crops and dealt with the two bodies that had piled up while I was busy, and then headed to dig up a long lost zombie. But this zombie didn't seem to be very animated. I took him to the autopsy table and found he was an 8% efficient zombie but I didn't know what to do with him. I thought maybe I had to resurrect him somehow and get him moving, so I left him for now and buried today's corpse. I headed around the spiral maze out to the witch hut, and once there I built this bridge to make access easier in the future, and then I gave the witch her health potion. This helped her remember that she is indeed Clotho the witch. I bought an alchemy recipe for rage potions, I'm not sure why, as well as two berry bush and one apple tree seeds from her. I also asked her for help with the merchant's lost taste situation, and she taught me the recipe for spices, which will cure him. I realized I now had a bunch of zombie tech options in my research trees. I researched second chance, unlocking the resurrection table. I built one, but I couldn't place this zombie's lifeless body on it. I could, however, place the fresh corpse that had just been delivered on it. And I discovered I needed one zombie juice and 10 faith to resurrect. And this is when I decided I really needed to up my sermon game, because if I was gonna get a zombie army, it was gonna cost heaps of faith. But what to do with this floppy zombie? I didn't have a clue, so I plonked him down here for now. I planted my berry and apple trees, buried another body, and tended my crops before calling on almighty Google to teach me how to make black paint. I learned that oil and ash would do the trick, and so I made a bunch of black paint, and then made ink, and then made a pen and ink, and suddenly I was able to write. I made a bunch of bronze star notes, three of which combine into bronze star chapters, and with this I'll be able to craft better prayers once I have five faith. I gave this week's sermon, and unfortunately only received the usual four faith, so I'll have to wait another week, and then I crafted all the notes and chapters I could, as well as ten flyers to give to the Inquisitor. I made the painful decision to use one faith to research cabbage, but I needed to in order to learn how to extract health solution from it, which I used to make spice for the merchant's tastelessness problem. I also grabbed some ink and paper to give to the poet in the tavern. I then ducked into Witch's Hill to check out the portal, and found it was under guard by the Inquisition. They'd heard someone was sniffing about trying to dig up old cultist magic. That was me, I'm sorry about that. And so they were here to shoo away any ditherers. This meant I couldn't have a look at the portal for clues, so the task to get rid of these guards was added to my journal. I gave the merchant his spice, and he sprinkled on a grasshopper to eat, which was very strange behavior, but it worked. His taste returned and he was so impressed he asked me to cook him five gold star dinners so that he could show them to his royal friends. I also gave the paper and ink to the poet, and this unlocked the ability to trade silver quality wine for silver quality stories, which is a pretty good deal as I need these to craft notes and chapters. I sold the seven burial certificates I'd accumulated and bought a silver wine, which I traded for a story and it turned out this was a repeatable quest, so I now had an easy access to stories if I needed them. I crafted up a storm and placed a confessional and church shrine down in the church, bringing the quality up to 21. I gave Jerry his wine finally, which he said wasn't as strong as he'd hoped for and only made him more depressed. And then I burned another body and collected a bunch more sand to keep the conical flask production up. And on day 65, I finally brought the Inquisitor his firewood and flyers. He was pleased, but many of his fans were bored of the witch burning spectacle and they left early. This disappointed the Inquisitor and he admitted the guards were having trouble finding witches and they needed more motivation. 
Revolution. So he wanted me to collect him 10 silver star wine as he believed this would fuel his guard's passion. He also gave me permission to use the vineyard on Witch's Hill. And he gave me permission to use the left side of the graveyard at the church as well. I bought some seeds from the farmer and I sold my abundance of carrot cutlets to the tavern to make a little extra cash. I planted all the seeds, baked some more cakes and had my first orchard harvest before greeting the bishop who was pleased to see the church was now above 20 quality. He still wanted his fish before he'd consider letting me upgrade the church though. Silly hungry bishop. I gave my sermon and found there was a way bigger crowd and I earned six faith instead of two. The only thing that had changed was the decoration score of the church. And this is when I properly realized that church quality actually had a huge impact on faith gain. I crafted the prayer for faith as this will give 50% extra faith plus one rather than a flat plus two faith like the casual prayer I've been using. I then began experimenting how to make some extra money. I made some berry juice, fish soup, and one of each iron tool and headed into town. The tavern keep didn't want my berry juice, but he bought my fish soup, but only for one silver. And the blacksmith wasn't interested in my tools at all, though I only had tier one of his shop unlocked, so perhaps he would have bought them if I had access to higher tiers. After that failed money-making experiment, I took comfort in the steady supply of burial certificates, my only reliable source of income. I unlocked illumination of faith and price of faith, giving me a perk that means my services will earn more money. Very nice, I love a profit church and also some more church decorations which I wasn't able to make just yet especially not the stained glass windows which need flame and gold jewelry I discovered the merchant sells silver star grape seeds so I bought some I quickly buried a one red and seven white skull body and then planted the grapes wine production here I come I was having some storage woes so I made three more trunks for my yard and then headed to this fishing spot up here where I caught a bunch of bronze and silver quality bream I also grabbed a bunch of coal for fuel while I was up there and then sliced up my fish into fillets since these were for high quality fish, I got higher quality fillets. Four for the bishop and four for that gypsy baron dude that gave me a quest like 70 days ago. I collected a ridiculous pile of sand to keep up with conical flask production, tended to my crops, which I had been ignoring for a while, and dealt with the three bodies that had piled up near the morgue. Day 73 was a Sunday, so I gave the bishop his fish and he was blasphemously grateful. And he agreed to upgrade the church. However, I had to buy a building permit from the box for 20 silver first. While investigating this, I realized I had access to some rightful citizens papers and a town pass. So that was cool. I gave this week's sermon with my improved prayer and got seven faith and about two and a half silver. So that was an improvement. And I quickly ran into town and sold some burial papers as well as some carrot cutlets and managed to get 20 silver with which I bought the permission papers and had the church upgraded. This basically made it a bit bigger and fancier with more space for me to place decorations and improve the quality. The bishop said he dreams of building a cathedral here, but he needs me to get the graveyard quality all the way up to 200 and the church quality above 50. So I had my work cut out for me. I then wandered out to give the gypsy Baron his fishies and he gave me some kebab recipes in return. Nice one, Gypsy Baron. By the way, this is what it looks like collecting from my furnaces after being away for a while. I harvested and replanted my grapes and as day 74 dawned, I gathered the materials to improve my church. I placed four wall candelabra, four candelabra on stands and then another shrine. And this increased the quality all the way up to 42. I attempted to resurrect this corpse as I now had enough faith, but the resurrection table said it was too rotten. And so I settled for burying this corpse. I ran into town and bought some gold star onion rings to use for the gold star dinners the merchant wants and then I rushed home because a fresh corpse had arrived all right <laughs> wait yeah, so this zombie was behaving exactly like my other zombie. And so it was time to figure out what the heck was going on. Why were all my zombies sleeping? And so I unlocked zombie wood cutting and built a big old sawmill. Oh He's doing his thing. It turns out my zombie was ready to go the whole time. He just lay there like an idiot until he was assigned a task. Oh well, I now had two zombies to work with. I gathered some materials, buried another body, the first on the left side of the church, which was quite a milestone, and then headed up to the zombie mines. I'd unlocked zombie mining and logistics. So I made the left and right mining station for the gaseous iron slash coal mine, where I put this bloke to work collecting giant chunks of iron, which was great news because I was running very low on the swamp iron I'd collected earlier. And I built this fella up porter station where he stood awaiting materials to grab and bring back to base. Go well my undead slaves, bring me iron. I'd collected 10 bees at this point so I made a beehive. I buried a body, tended to my crops and on day 79 I gave my first sermon in my glorious new church. And thanks to all the improvements I'd made I earned an enormous 13 faith. More than enough for yet another zombie. I spied to the combo prayer in the desk options. This provided both a faith and money bonus at my church services. But it required a whole dang book to craft. So I unlocked books 
crafted a soft cover and made myself one. It gives all the benefits of the faith prayer that I've been using as well as a 50% increase to the money earned. So that seemed good to me. I placed another church shrine down which brought the church quality up to 47 and then figured it was time to pick up wine making and I unlocked simple fertilizers too. I checked out the wine press and barrel recipes but I was fresh out of iron so I went to check up on my zombie bros. Old mate had managed to dig up some iron but production was at a halt due to a lack of an iron ore stockpile which I hadn't realized I need to build. So I built one at base and another one at their end. There he goes. He's off. Look at my guy go. He's beautiful. He's beautiful. I'm so happy there's this zombie automation mechanic. It's so good. It's genius. Those chunks of iron break down into five iron ore, by the way. Not too bad. I then made like a billion hemp rope and then used old mate Google to work out I needed to study maggots, which I could then break down into life solution, which I could then mix with ash to make growth enhancer, which I could mix with peat to make quality fertilizer. And you can see why I needed Google's help. I headed into town and bought five silver star baked salmon, which I used with the gold star onion rings and cake to make dinners with a 97% chance to get a gold star. And somehow I got bitterly trapped and the last one I made came in with a 3% chance silver star. Extremely rude behavior. So I ducked back into town and bought some more onion rings and salmon and made my fifth gold star dinner for the merchant. A couple of bodies had piled up so I buried one, butchered and burnt the other and then Sunday had rolled around so I used my combo prayer for the first time. And it gave 13 faith as expected but it didn't seem to give that much more money. I headed out to collect some stone and discovered this big rock here actually gives infinite chunks of stone which was excellent news as I was running low on little rocks to pickaxe. I made myself a wine press and barrel and I harvested my grapes and replanted with quality fertilizer. And with that harvest, I had enough to make one pail of grape juice, but I need two pails to make wine. So I wasn't quite able to make wine for the inquisitor just yet. I then went on a rampage and unlocked eight or so anatomy and alchemy researchers, including a bunch of embalming stuff and another surgery perk to further decrease the chance of botched surgeries. I had a peek at all the embalming injections I could craft and it was another case of I have no idea what the heck is going on. I continued my tech spending spree and unlocked a bunch of stuff in the smith and building trees, including steel, iron castings, access to new minerals, and a higher tier carpenter's workbench. I built a stone cutter level two and then resurrected zombie number three, and this fella had 12% efficiency. I ran him up north and put him in the iron mines too. And while there, I discovered another blockage. It looked like zombie one had dug up coal and it had nowhere to go. But before dealing with that, I quickly ducked into town and gave the merchant his five gold star dinners. I also bought some silver star grapes from him, as well as six silk. I then returned to the zombie outpost and built a stone stockpile, but that didn't solve the issue. So I tried a trunk and sure enough, the coal was transferred into it. With that blockage now solved, I expected to see a glorious bounty of iron flowing from the hills. On day 88, I burned one corpse and buried another and then crafted through the night so that I could make a carpenter's workbench level two. I was still a bit starved for metal, so it was a bit of a struggle, but I eventually crafted enough jointings to install two soft church benches. These also made use of the silk I'd bought from the merchant. And now my church quality was up to 51. Next in my sights was the quality of the graveyard and so I unlocked stone gravestones. And I knew I was gonna need a buttload of stone, so I created this glorious conga line of stone chunks. I was delighted to find that each stone grave fence or gravestone I made gave an enormous five blue tech points at the cost of a measly couple of stone. And so I immediately ceased making infinite conical flasks and decided this would be my blue points method from now on. And with my first load of decorations, I increased the graveyard quality from 29 to 60, just like that. I showed off my new 50 plus church interior to the bishop and then I unleashed an absolute beauty of a sermon and earned a whopping 16 faith and almost five silver. I harvested my grapes and thanks to the fertilizer I'd used, I received two gold star grapes and two gold star grape seeds. Very nice. I now had enough for my second pail of grape juice. So I crafted that and then chucked two pails into the barrel to turn into wine. It said I have a 50% chance of producing silver quality wine. So fingers crossed that happens as that's the quality the Inquisitor is expecting. I placed some coal into a furnace to create graphite and then got back to the stone pushing silver willies and place down a bunch more grave fences before resurrecting zombie number four. I managed to get this one up to seven white skulls and this gave him an 18% work efficiency. So I guess efficiency correlates to corpse quality, which makes sense. Since this was my most efficient zombie, I took him up to replace one of the noobs in the mines as I wanted my iron collection to be as quick as possible. I put the reject zombie on the big tree for now. Have I mentioned how fun it is bossing zombies around? I then got back to my stone shenanigans and with this batch, the quality shot up to 95. I mixed some graphite with iron in this furnace to begin 
smelting my first steel bars. And when I was breaking down an iron chunk, I was pleased to find a couple of silver nuggets popped out. So I was now beginning to accumulate some precious metals. I resurrected zombie number five, and unfortunately he had pretty crappy stats, only 8% efficiency. I built two zombie spots at the stone quarry and placed him on one, and also grabbed old mate from the sawmill and placed him on the other side. So now I have plenty of stone coming in for infinite blue points crafting grave decor. Speaking of, I then got back to business crafting headstones, reaching a graveyard quality of 118. I collected my wine and was pleased to find it of silver star quality. I upgraded my anvil to rank three and put on some steel parts to craft and then paid the inquisitor a visit. He was pleased with the quality of the wine and my friendship with him was raised to 50. I asked him how business was and his answer in short was not so good. He decided he needed some snacks to attract people back to the spectacle of a good old witch burning, which makes sense to me, everybody does love snacks. And so he tasked me with creating a snack stand that would sell beer and burgers. He said I could keep the profit, so frankly I thought it was an ingenious plan. I unlocked the brewing stand research, but didn't look into it just yet as I was hoping to hit 200 graveyard quality before the bishop showed up. And so I was back to my business of crafting copious amounts of stone grave decorations. But when Sunday was almost upon me and I'd only hit 141 points, I gave up until next week and decided to build a brewing stand. And I discovered I was going to need hops, except I wasn't sure where to get hop seeds. I also unlocked tricks of the trade and engineer, which gave me a few handy perks to make crafting yield better results. And then I headed over to the church. I hadn't reached 200 points yet, but the bishop was still thoroughly impressed by my stonework. In fact, he was so impressed that an idea formed in his tiny brain. He commissioned me to make three gold star marble statues of him. One for his office, one for his soup kitchen, and one for the front of the church. That seems like a perfectly normal and reasonable request to me. I gave my sermon, earned a spicy 15 faith and almost 10 silver. I actually don't know why the silver was so much more this week, but I didn't argue. I then crafted a preparation place too, fridge pallet, and embalming table too. The embalming table lets me inject crap into the corpses, I guess. The fridge pallet stores corpses and stops them from rotting, obviously. And the prep table too seemed the same to me, so maybe I needed to unlock further tech to make the proper use of it. I harvested and replanted my grapes, and some of the replant was actually gold star. And on day 98, I did some choice googling and worked out that the miller sells hop seeds, but I found I was only at tier one with him, and I needed tier three to buy silver quality hop seeds. I sold eight burial certificates and 10 silver wine and earned 23 silver. The 10 wine actually sold for 11 silver and 10 copper, so that might actually be a decent money-making venture after all this time. Anyway, I then went home and started making a billion flour to sell to the miller so I can hopefully unlock his higher tiers. But a dead body arrived, so I made zombie number six, another 18% efficiency zombie. I researched zombie farming and built this zombie farm, which looks glorious, but it's kind of inefficient as it used up nine tiles, but farms only six. The benefit, of course, is that it's automated. I then got back to making tons of flour. I sold a bunch to the miller and it worked. Tier two will be available tomorrow. I bought some silver star pumpkin seeds and a bunch of carrot seeds from Old MacDonald and then finally built the buffet and discovered that I'll need to provide gold star beers and burgers. So that will present a bit of a challenge as I'll need gold hops for the beer and gold onions for the burgers. I planted 24 carrots in the zombie farm and put zombie six to work. I planted the pumpkins too and then found my stone pile was overflowing. Good job, zombie mine. So I processed it all. And on day 100, I upgraded the zombie farm to rank two using 12 fertilizer. I sliced some human meat and put it on to cook in preparation for burgers. I made some more zombie juice so I could resurrect zombie number seven and I whacked him on the big tree to chop away. And with that, I had played my first 100 days of Graveyard Keeper. I've achieved a lot, from drastically improving my graveyard and church, building a thriving production area and farm, building a slave army of zombies, and progressing in my journey to find my way back home to my love. But I've got a long way to go. Let me know if you'd like to see more, or if you know of any other games you reckon I should play. Check out this video where I get stuck on a raft for 100 days, and I kill an entire family tree of sharks out of spite.